Hi all, welcome back. Today we are discussing about cardiovascular system facts for multiple choice questions. So these are commonly asked as multiple choice questions in various examinations. So we will begin with the first fact ECG showing ST elevation in leads V2, V3 and V4 suggests an anterior wall myocardial infarction. V2, V3, V4, anterior wall MI. The left anterior descending artery is the primary source of blood for anterior wall of the heart. LAD, anterior wall of heart. The circumflex artery supplies the lateral wall of the heart. Circumflex artery, lateral wall. Internal mammary artery supplies the breast. So, breast is supplied by internal mammary artery. The coronary arteries may receive a minute portion of blood during systole and most of the blood to the coronary arteries are, is supplied during diastole. So it's very important the coronary arteries supply heart during diastole. So only during diastole the blood supply is there. Breathing patterns are irrelevant to blood flow. Atherosclerosis or plaque formation is the leading cause of coronary artery disease. Atherosclerosis is the leading cause for coronary artery disease. A myocardial infarction is commonly a result of coronary artery disease. In atherosclerosis, hardened blood, uh, blood vessels can't dilate properly. Therefore, they constrict blood flow and block oxygen transport. As a result, Oxygen can't reach the heart muscle resulting in angina. So angina is a result of lack of oxygen to the myocardial tissues. Diabetes mellitus is a risk factor for coronary artery disease that can be controlled with diet, exercise and medication. So very very important diabetes mellitus is a risk factor for CAD and it can be controlled with diet, exercise and medication. Sublingual nitroglycerin is administered to treat acute angina. Coronary artery bypass surgery and percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty are invasive surgical treatments for coronary artery diseases. An electrocardiogram showing ST elevation in leads 2, 3 and AVF suggests occlusion of right coronary artery. 2, 3 AVF, right coronary artery. The right coronary artery supplies the right ventricle or the inferior portion of the heart. Occlusion of the coronary artery could produce an infarction in that area. The most common symptom of myocardial infarction is chest pain resulting from deprivation of oxygen to the heart. The correct landmark for obtaining an apical pulse is the left fifth intercostal space in the mid-clavicular line. The apex of the heart is the point of maximal impulse, PMI, where the heart sounds are heard loudest. Rescuers of adult victims should begin compressions rather than opening the airway and delivering breaths. The sequence of cardiopulmonary resuscitation or is CAB, compressions, airway, breathing, rather than ABC, airway, breathing, compressions. Chest compressions depth on an adult should be at least 2 inches, that is 5 cm. Trained rescuers should also provide cardiopulmonary resuscitation with a compression to ventilation ratio 30 is to 2. The outermost layer of the heart is called epicardium. The epicardium is made up of squamous epithelial cells overlying connective tissue. The myocardium is the middle layer of the heart and forms most of the heart wall. Myocardium has striated muscle fibers that cause heart to contract. The heart's inner layer is called endocardium. The endocardium consists of endothelial tissue with blood vessels and bundles of smooth muscle. The serous pericardium has two layers, the parietal and the visceral layer. The pericardium surrounds the heart and roots of the great vessels. Pericardium has two layers, fibrous and serous pericardium. 
troponin i levels rise rapidly and are detectable within 1 hour of myocardial injury lactate dehydrogenase isoenzymes ldh may be useful in diagnosing cardiac injury because creatine kinase levels may rise with skeletal muscle injury increased creatine kinase levels may help detect cardiac injury Measuring for an increase in troponin I levels is the best indicator for determining myocardial injury. So troponin I levels are the best indicator for determining myocardial injury. An aneurysm is an outpouching of a vessel. Systemic hypertension or increased atrial contraction can result in a fourth heart sound, S4. Aortic wall malfunction is heard as a murmur. Left ventricle is responsible for most of the cardiac output. Because the myocardium is deprived of oxygen during a myocardial infarction, additional oxygen is administered to assist oxygenation and prevent further damage. Arrhythmias caused by oxygen deprivation to the myocardium are the most common complication of a myocardial infarction. Because the pumping function of the heart is compromised by myocardial infarction, heart failure is the second most common complication of MI. Pericarditis most commonly results from a bacterial or viral infection but may also occur after a myocardial infarction. A myocardial infarction, if severe enough, can progress to heart failure. Jugular venous pressure, JVP, is measured with a head of the bed inclined between 15 and 30 degrees. A centimeter ruler is used to obtain vertical distance between the sternal angle and the point of highest pulsation. The apical pulse is the most accurate pulse point in the body. Radial pulse can be affected by cardiac and vascular diseases. Therefore, it won't always accurately depict the heart rate. Heart contains four valves, two atrioventricular valves, that is mitral and tricuspid valves, and two semilunar valves, that is pulmonic and aortic valves. The aortic valve prevents backflow from the aorta into the left ventricle. The pulmonic valve prevents backflow from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle. The tricuspid valve prevents backflow from the right ventricle to the right atrium. The mitral valve prevents backflow from the left ventricle to the left atrium. The mitral valve is also known as the bicuspid or left AV valve because the atria only have to pump blood into the ventricles. Their walls are relatively thin. The walls of left ventricle are the thickest of any of the chambers of the heart because Left ventricle pumps blood against the resistance of the systemic circulation. The walls of the right ventricle are thicker than those of the atria because right ventricle pumps blood against the resistance of the pulmonary circulation. Crackles in lungs are a classical sign of left-sided heart failure. Most accurate area on the body to assess dependent edema in a bedridden client is the sacral area. Sacral or dependent edema is secondary to right-sided heart failure. Cardiomyopathy is usually identified as a symptom of left-sided heart failure. Left-sided heart failure causes primarily pulmonary symptoms rather than systemic ones. An increased PR interval is indicative of first degree AV block. Normal sinus rhythm and sinus arrhythmia produce normal PR intervals. The portion of the iota distal to the renal arteries is more prone to aneurysms because the vessel is in surrounded by any stable structures unlike proximal portion of the iota. Abdominal pain is the most common symptom in an abdominal aortic aneurysm as a result of disruption of normal circulation in an abdominal region. An aortogram clearly delineates the vessels and any abnormalities. An abdominal aortic aneurysm 
will only be visible on an X-ray if it is calcified. Computer tomography, CT scan and USG don't give a direct view of the vessels and don't yield an accurate diagnosis as the iotogram. Rupture of an abdominal aortic aneurysm is a life-threatening emergency. Hypertension should be avoided or controlled in a client with an abdominal aortic aneurysm because it can cause a weakened vessel to rupture. The aorta lies directly left to the umbilicus. Continuous pressure on the vessel wall from hypertension causes the walls to weaken and an aneurysm to occur. Hypertension is linked to more than 50% of the clients with abdominal aortic aneurysms. A bruit is a vascular sound that reflects partial arterial occlusion. Severe lower back pain indicates an aneurysm rupture secondary to pressure being applied within the abdominal cavity. Blood pressure decreases due to loss of blood when aneurysm ruptures. Symptoms of severe lower back pain, decreased blood pressure, decreased RBC count and increased WBC count indicate ruptured abdominal aortic aneurysm. In most cases of cardiomyopathy, the etiology is a viral or bacterial infection or cardiotoxic effects of drugs or alcohol. The hypertrophic obstetric cardiomyopathy, hypertrophy of ventricular septum is apparent. Heart failure most commonly occurs in clients with cardiomyopathy because the structure and function of the heart muscle is affected. Myocardial infarction results from prolonged myocardial ischemia due to reduced blood flow through one of the coronary arteries. Atrial fibrillation is defined as a chaotic asynchronous electrical activity in the atrial tissue. Ventricular fibrillation is a chaotic rhythm with no QRS complexes. In atrial flutter, there, is, there are flutter waves that are sawtooth in appearance. Sawtooth appearance. P waves are present in sinus tachycardia. Dyspnea, cough, weight gain, weakness and edema are classic symptoms of heart failure. Pericarditis is exhibited by a feeling of fullness in the chest and auscultation of pericardial friction rub. Hypertension is usually exhibited by headaches, visual disturbances and a flushed face. An S4 heart sound occurs as a result of increased resistance to ventricular filling after the atrial contraction. Ischemic changes are represented on an ECG by T-wave inversion. An increased QRS complex duration suggests a bundle branch block. A shortened PR interval indicates a junctional rhythm. Pathologic Q-waves are present in myocardial infarction. Inadequate oxygen supply to the myocardium is responsible for the pain accompanying angina. Cardiogenic shock is related to reduced cardiac output and ineffective pumping of the heart. Distributive shock results from change in intravascular volume distribution and is usually associated with increased cardiac output. The cardiac index is a figure derived by dividing cardiac output by the client's body surface area. Cardiac index is used for identifying whether the cardiac output is meeting a client's needs. The most useful factor in detecting a client's risk of developing cardiogenic shock is the cardiac index. Primary hypertension is characterized by a progressive, usually asymptomatic blood pressure increase over several years. Malignant hypertension is rapidly progressive uncontrollable and causes a rapid onset of complications. Secondary hypertension occurs secondary to a non-correctable cause. An occipital headache is typical of hypertension secondary to continued increased pressure on the cerebral vasculature. Most common symptom of hypertension is headache. The firing of sinoatrial node, SA node, sets off a chain reaction in the cardiac conduction. 
when impulse leaves sa node it travels through atria along bachmann's bundle and the internodal pathway is on its way to av bundle av nodes after the impulse passes through atrioventricular node it travels to the ventricle first down the bundle of his then along bundle branches and finally to the purkinje fibers sa node has a firing rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute av node has a firing rate of 40 to 60 per minute purkinje fibers have a firing rate of 20 to 40 beats per minute automaticity automaticity is the ability to spontaneously initiate an impulse pacemaker cells have this ability excitability is a cell's response to an electrical stimulus results from ion shifts across the cell membrane conduction is the ability of a cell to transmit an electrical impulse to another cardiac cell contractility is the ability of a cell to contract after receiving a stimulus preload is the stretching of a muscle fibers in the ventricles as the ventricle fill with blood afterload refers to pressure that the ventricular muscles must generate to overcome the higher pressure in the aorta to get blood out of the heart valves in the vein prevents blood blood back flow and most are allocated in smaller more distal veins the largest vein the vena cava has no valves arteries have thick muscular walls to accommodate high speed and pressure of blood flow arterioles have thinner walls than arteries and control blood flow to the capillaries capillaries have microscopic walls composed of single layer of endothelial cells the heart relies on the coronary arteries and their branches for its supply of oxygenated blood it also depends on cardiac veins to remove oxygen depleted blood during diastole blood flows to the heart and into the coronary arteries the right coronary artery supplies blood to the right atrium part of the left atrium most of the right ventricle and inferior part of the left ventricle left coronary artery which splits into left anterior descending and circumflex arteries supplies blood to the left atrium most of the left ventricle and most of the interventricular septum pulses alternance is a regular alternating pattern of weak and strong pulses and is associated with left sided heart failure pulses bigeminous is similar to pulses alternance but occurs at irregular intervals and is caused by premature atrial or ventricular beats pulses paradoxus has increases and decreases in amplitude associated with respiratory cycle marked decreases occur when the client inhales pulses paradoxus is associated with pericardial tamponade advanced heart failure and constrictive pericarditis pulses befriance shows an initial upstroke a subsequent downstroke and then another upstroke during systole pulses befriance is caused by aortic stenosis and aortic insufficiency endocarditis is an inflammation of the endocardium the heart walls or cardiac processes it typically results from bacterial invasion and therefore may also be referred to as infective endocarditis sharp pain and cold feet are symptoms of alteration in arterial blood flow varicose veins occur most commonly in saphenous veins of the lower extremities edema and pigmentation are the signs of and symptoms of secondary varicose veins ligation and stripping of the vein can get rid of vein of varicosity but it won't prevent other varicose veins from forming so the treatment of choice is ligation and stripping pulmonary embolism is manifested by dyspnea chest pain and diminished breath sounds a pulmonary embolism is a blood clot that forms in a vein travels to the lungs and lodges in the pulmonary vasculature a hemothorax refers to blood in the pleural space a pneumothorax is caused by an opening in the pleura pulmonary hypertension is an increase in pulmonary artery pressure 
which increases the workload of the right ventricle. Deep vein thrombosis or DVT is associated with deep leg pain of sudden onset. Production of pink frothy sputum is a classical sign of acute pulmonary edema. Hypocapnia is a blood gas abnormality that is initially most suggestive of pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema is a life-threatening complication of heart failure. Pulmonary edema can develop in minutes, second a sudden fluid shift from pulmonary vasculature to the interstitium and alveoli of the lung. Cardiac output is the amount of blood the heart expels per minute. Irregular ventricular responses and absent P waves characterize atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation occurs with irregular and rapid discharge from multiple ectopic atrial foci that cause curing of the atria without atrial asystole. Regular and equal atrial and ventricular rhythms and rate of 100 to 160 beats per minute characterize sinus tachycardia. So that's all for today. We will be up with another system. So keep watching, study well. Thank you. If you have not subscribed this channel yet, kindly subscribe this channel by clicking the subscribe button below.